Good morning, afternoon, evening, and best wishes to us all now and through the new year. I'm Lisa Giuliani, the APF Events Coordinator. We welcome you to the APF Awards Ceremony. This is the Asia Pacific Time Zone. And we're about to show you the overview of the ceremony. So we'll acknowledge some of the APF awards across the board. And then we'll acknowledge some student awards, this year's student awards. Uh, we'll go into some breakout rooms and have some discussions with the winners. And then we'll wrap up. Sounds simple, but it, uh, the last ceremony took about an hour and a half. So we plan to, to just run its course and hopefully get you out of here before then. But in any case, thank you all for being here. And to kick off the ceremony, I would like to introduce to you our APF chair, Tanya Schindler. Tanya is an internationally recognized futurist with over a decade of experience in the areas of foresight, innovation, leadership, and strategy. She's the CEO of Future to All and founded the Futures Spaces community. Tanya is a valued keynote speaker, sharing her expertise to empower others to adopt a future-oriented mindset and to deal with uncertainty. Thank you so much, Tanya. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We already had, uh, for me, a night uh, for the people in the Americas, uh, a day session. So welcome to our second session, which will be even more exciting than the first one, at least for me, because I'm feeling a bit more awake. I've um, been APF member for almost 10 years now, uh, joined during my studies um, in Swinburne University in Australia, where Peter Hayward was here today as my professor. I also uh, won a second prize with student awards, and this is how I joined APF. In the foresight world, I even a bit more longer, so I started uh, two years before doing my master's in the corporate world to explore futures and foresight. And I'm very excited now after being three years uh, your vice chair um, to step up and being the APF chair for now. I also want to thank uh, Sherman who's here today, our former chair, who is now more focusing on his PhD back in Australia, which makes me happy to see that connection um, across the world. And also all the other fellow board members who are left and the new ones who joined. We really here in the APF to create a community, to create a platform and to invite you all to be part of this. So it's all the energy and passion that we put in and it's all the, the energy, excitement and engagement that you uh, contribute uh, to us as well. The APF has now been around for over, over 20 years and we're in a process where we re-energizing, restructuring a lot. And I also want to invite you all to our town hall, which will be in the end of February. And there will be an announcement on social media or through my chair's report uh, this week, where we introduce to you the new strategic plan for the next three years, and also the ability to uh, engage through initiatives, um, to lead something, to create local and regional groups, because we really want to empower your members to create this commuting exchange. We were really uh, glad last year to met in Washington and Dubai and doing the Dubai Future Forum again in September with the community and we really felt a strong energy and connection. So I just uh, yeah welcome you again to join to be part of this. And of course, I want to say congratulations and thank you to all of the award winners. Um, without you, also the field wouldn't grow and wouldn't be challenged. And we're all here to explore and learn from you as well. So let me start introducing you a bit to uh, what's ahead. Um, I already talked a bit about this. Um, as I mentioned, our town hall, we'll be updating a little bit and get more precise what's going to plan ahead for this year, as well as new exciting events where you can contribute, participate and share your knowledge on that. We will reestablish the, for example, members will let where you can really connect with us. But as you see, we're all about collaboration, openness, professionalism, and intergenerational equity, which we also will see today where we introduce some of our longstanding members, as well as the emergent fellows. 
So let's go ahead and start with some of the attributions that we did last year. And the first one is the Cindy Freeman Award for Peter Bishop for his longstanding contribution, energy, and support that he put in for the APF. The Cindy Freeman Award was established not by, but for Cindy Freeman after she served for seven years as an APF chair and really also back then re-energized the APF to new levels. So Peter Bishop was the second person to receive the award and he got recognized also during last year's gathering in Dubai. So thank you again and a round of applause for Peter Bishop for being a valued member of our community. The second award is for Mary Jane, or as we know her as MJ, who is a also long-standing and founding member of the APF. And we transformed our emeritus membership into an emeritus award, which comes along with a lifelong APF membership, because we really want to value this. As you all know, the future only exists with the past and the present, and we all connect it. So we really want to acknowledge our roots and really also want to give acknowledgement to the members who've been with us all that long and all the journey. So a round of applause uh, for MJ and receiving the Meritus Members Award. Which leads us to our next congratulations. And this is the Emerging Fellows from 2021 and 2022. We reinvented that program thanks to Patricia Lustig, who will also uh, speak in a second um, uh, about your program in more detail, but it's now really from the Emerging Fellows for the Emerging Fellows. There's an overlapping cohort, they design it, they select um, the participants based on transparent criteria, and they also shape their interests, they invite mentors, and it really becomes a peer-to-peer, -peer, peer over generational um, journey, where they step into um, deepening their foresight knowledge or foresight topic, let's say more, because they're writing um, reports that are put out on a blog post, they're put on our, our channels, they're also contributing to Compass. So stay tuned and connect with them. Um, I only have um, yeah, highly admiration for their work and their uh, inspiration to go there. So we hear now a bit more about the Emerging Fellows from Trisha. And a big thank for Trisha as well to establishing that. It's helping people who are new to the field of, of um, futures and foresight uh, get some visibility, get linked into what's going on, get linked into networks and become part of a community that's focused on learning because that's what the emerging fellows are. Well, the 2021s really helped to develop the program and, and change it into something that it hadn't been before and focus it on building the community and building the community across cohorts as well. And they've been amazing. And they started with a three-year program and decided that was a bit much. So we moved it to a two-year program. And we, are, we continue to have the program emerge as the fellows want. That's what it should be. It's not up to us to decide. It's up to us to enable. Uh, the 2022s, well, both cohorts were amazing. Um, the 2022s, we kind of started to settle into it. And they're also taking over the sustainability of the program. So they, they took over some of the content teaching and coaching people to do that. Each cohort coaches the next. It's, it's wonderful. And that was their idea. I think it's really, well, certainly for me, it's about legacy. It's how can we get more people doing and using foresight and future thinking because the decisions that people are making today are not the best. And it's because of lack of foresight. I mean, super important to improve that and to get people using it helps you be less worried because it helps you, um, what do you call it? 
box, fence in the uncertainty, understand what really is uncertainty, uncertain, and what you have agency over. And that's the best gift we can give people. So we've got some really cool ideas coming up for later where emerging fellows might run interviews and fireside chats with emeritus fellows. Talk about a generation, um, not necessarily an age, probably, but not necessarily an age, but certainly in new to the field and old hand. I think that'll be really interesting. Thank you so much. A round of applause uh, for Trisha and her energy and also for all the emerging fellows um, of this year who finished the program. Coming from making the circle from the emerging fellows to our recognition of longstanding members. Um, so please apologize if I mispronounce any name of my germ due to my German accent, but we want to thank Jennifer Jarrett, Jim Dater, Oliver Markley, Clem Bezold, Ren Wheelwright, Cindy Freeman, and Richard Slaughter for being with us uh, for such a long time, putting in their energy, still fostering, challenging, and growing the field. And as Trisha mentioned, we would love to see with the Meritus and the long-standing members a bridge where we have this intergeneration conversation um, where we yeah, also learn from our past, present, and future and where the field want to grow. So thank you all um, for being long members with us and pulling your your energy and effort in it so thanks so much for this first introduction and now i want to congratulate um already all student and if award winners and i hand it back to lisa thank you thank you thank you tanya and we look forward to supporting your lead this year so we look forward to seeing Thanks. What's Glad to have you all on board. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, next we will showcase our 2023 APF Student Award winners. And to kick off this portion, I'd like to introduce to you our very special podcast host of the Future Pod, Peter Hayward. So, as a future practitioner, lecturer, Peter has been passionate about the field of futures for many years. His focus is to promote the use of futures thinking in corporate government and for non-for-profit organizations. And he supports and mentors the up and coming futures practitioners throughout the world. Over to you, Peter. Thanks, Lisa. Good, uh, good evening from Melbourne, Australia uh, to where you are in the world. Since 2011, the APF has recognized the best work for students studying futures and foresight. There's three reasons that the APF has run this recognition program. The first point of the recognition program is to support and encourage institutions that teach futures and foresight. It is a difficult process to keep futures and foresight courses going in universities. They're not well understood by academics and something like the APF recognising best work is a promotional activity inside the universities themselves. The second reason we do the, we have done recognitions, of course, is to recognise the best work and encourage both undergraduate and graduate students to do good futures work. The work, the work is lodged by the institutions on the student's behalf. It is assessed by practitioners, and the practitioners award the best work, both individual and group. Um, and the third reason we've had these awards for the last 13 years is, of course, to give encouragement to graduate students to, as Tanya did when Tanya said she she was nominated for an award when she was studying Futures and Foresight with me, and lo and behold, she's now the chair of the APF, and that just makes the point. So this is why the 
student awards are important. We, we, we put a lot of time and effort into it. We encourage institutions to participate. So let's go through this year's winners and we'll just run the slideshow and you'll see the groups who were successful. Thanks for that. Now, I'm going to say we had students in the North American time zone be available to meet uh, and have breakout rooms. Uh, any of the Can any of the winners, uh, any of the nominated students that are actually in the audience, can they send a message to Lisa to put their hand up to say they're here and we will and we will go ahead and run the breakouts? Um, Otherwise, we can leave the recognition as what we've done and then um, and then move to the IF awards and give more time to the IF because there's a lot of people in the IF process. Yes, Peter, we um, don't have us. I don't think we have any students at this uh, segment, but we do have two videos. Uh, we'll still show those videos and then we can... Uh, we can move on, but at least uh, let's get the two videos that were submitted in. Okay. So the first video we have is. My major research project titled In the Name of Justice focuses on effective polarization, how it emerges and escalates and how we might My major research project titled In the Name of Justice focuses on effective polarization, how it emerges and escalates, and how we might move forward as a society despite the challenging circumstances we inevitably face. I explored four alternative future states, each with their own approach to how our society may elect to deal with conflict. It was most surprising personally to uncover how much of our beliefs and worldviews are shaped directly by our social influences. But one outcome that altered my perspective, not just in the context of polarized ideologies, but in relationships in general, is the notion that in order for us to solve a problem, we must first see ourselves as within it, understanding our own role in the dynamic of the system, not only the role of the side we find at fault. Similarly, another recurring finding in the research is how important dissent is for innovation, problem solving and solution finding. This may be the key to moving forward through challenges and conflict. My name is Mushfika Jamaluddin, and I'm part of the Shameless Collective. As a group, we see so much potential for the impact that our Experiential Futures project can have in the world. Our dream is to see this project as an interactive exhibit in museums, like the Museum of Future in Dubai, the Museum of Futures in Sydney, the Futurium in Berlin, or the Museum of Sex in New York. Our dream is to see our workshop becoming an online course or even a reality exhibit in conjunction with sex therapists and sex coaches. I would like to see this work in front of new stakeholders who are looking for new ways to navigate and relate to challenging emotions, like community organizers, teachers, and leadership teams. I would love to see a high-fidelity production of our project showcased at an event as an exemplar of how to address taboo topics. Hello, my dream for the project is to work alongside sex therapists and coaches yeah. to continue to develop the project and make it the best it can be. And you, where you'd like to see our project next. Thanks, Lisa. I'll just correct one thing on the slide. That group there, the uh, Shameless Collective, they actually came first. Uh, they also won an IF award for inclusion. Um, all the winning, all the awarded work is accessible 
from the competition website. Um, we're currently revamping the website. And if you are interested in seeing the work by the students, any of the categories, um, then I suggest that you, if if you just give us a little time to get the website going, but the uh, you will be able to actually see the work and the work is of tremendous high quality. And if there's anyone in the audience who is either involved in an institution that would be interested in participating in the awards, because as I say, this is a this is an award not for students to nominate, but institutions to nominate their students. Um, applications are still open. They can be uh, institutions can still submit up until the end of February. If anybody hasn't participated but is interested, then they can reach out to me uh, at the APF um, or they can drop something in the chat to that effect uh, and I'll follow up with them. But, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's me done, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Okay, so no challenge question, but thank you for putting in that plug. Hopefully folks uh, reach out or watch this later and they'll come they'll come knocking on your door peter so and i also know that you're not running the student awards alone so a shout out to charles brass and to the judging team okay yes i do i do a magnificent job so let's now move to our next segment the if awards most significant futures work and to kick off this segment we have two dedicated award conveners that came together for a second year in search of those who are asking what if. And I have the honor of introducing Maggie Grayson, an award-winning futurist recognized by the Association of Professional Futurists for her significant contributions in the field. She also has a decade-long background designing for renowned theater companies like the International Shakespeare Globe and Stratford Theatre Festival, blending creative staging with futures visions. Do tell us more, Maggie. <laughs> and I will just uh, briefly introduce John. I know that John's, John Sweeney couldn't make it uh, today, but he sends the most utmost energy for this group, for the vibe. Uh, he says, enjoy. And so John Sweeney, an award-winning author, designer, and futurist, recognized for his work as a practitioner and consultant and educator, serves as the faculty at the University of Houston Strategic Foresight Master's Program, and he also serves as the Transformative Foresight Lead at the School of International Futures. So, John, there's your shout out. Over to you, Maggie. <laughs> I, I think John might actually be teaching right now, so... Um... Uh, thanks for everything you do, John. Uh, he's directing his energy in a different direction. Uh, I am here fully to direct my energy towards you. This is a, an amazing, amazing opportunity to see everybody, uh, or at least as many possible uh, people together uh, who are thinking about the future in a different way. As Lisa said, what if is um, the, at the heart of the question. It's the heart of the question that... Um, Everybody does. And we didn't want to limit um, what uh, thinking about the future was to any academic constraints. So John and I looked at the most significant futures work uh, award. And in the 20th anniversary, we flipped it and we thought, OK, let's look at the future of the field and what is it that's happening? So we um, invited uh, Lisa and many other judges and volunteers and the advisory board to help us rethink how we might celebrate all the diversity approaches, um, mindsets um, and regions around the world that are thinking about the future and put a, a shine a light on their work. Um, personally, when I was a student, I couldn't find anything that uh, really resonated with the work that I did as a futurist. And so now we have this platform of between last year and this year, 170 projects that have been all, um, uh, all kind of um, uh, submitted and people can take a look at 
what is what is interesting to them that might influence their work down the road. So there is a report from 2022, and there will be one from 2023 about what the projects are, what some of the themes are, um, and so on. If you go to the APF website into the store, there is a short summary version. There's also a much longer version, which is a couple of dozen pages. So if you like papers. Um, <clears throat> And uh, I'm I'm not gonna jump off camera until I acknowledge all of you, all of your teammates, all of the judges, all of the returning judges, and uh, all of the advisors, and everyone who was elemental in putting together the most significant futures work to give it the platform that we have now to become the IF Awards which is something that has had organizations from around the world and individuals, um, creators and so on contribute to. So this is a really, really exciting time. And we look forward to celebrating you throughout the year and also um, inviting more people's projects in for next year. Uh, so I think we have some videos. I'm gonna throw it back to Lisa. Thanks, Maggie. That is correct. We will get started. We have eight pre recorded videos, and a lot of the videos you're watching today, the winners are also in the audience. So we will have some time to speak with them in breakout rooms. Oh, and here are our 2023 judges and advisory committee. The work could not have been done without this bunch. And without further ado, there is class of 2023 cohort 2023 IF award winners. Great job. So today you'll be hearing from these folks. We're running through the videos that will be playing for you momentarily. DJ, Chairman. Oh, Lewis. You know, like graduation and you're cheering for like the people. I would really like to see the weak singles work by Citra. The stories, the what if questions, the different future artifacts used in a lot of different workshops where people try to imagine alternative futures and especially futures worth having. have yet to continue our work, utilize the outcomes, and catch this moment for institutional appetite and momentum. Considering ecological and environmental threats due to the climate change, I also suggest to create additional scenarios with the drivers and link them to the environmental topics that are on the table of the government and the society. Thank you. We would also like to carry out experiments and develop prototypes based on the impacts and application we envision. Using the narrative scenarios, we can pipe tunnel current and propose strategies and policies to improve green development policy framework. There is also an opportunity to establish an ongoing scanning process that would allow for exploration of other topics through foresight lens. Constantly updating signal libraries and generating new drivers and scenarios would enable us to have a future-proofing tool for programming and policy making. Hello, we are from the Office of the Future Generations Commissioner and where we would like to see our Maturity Matrix project go next is for it to be used by public sector organisations in Wales to advance on their journey towards sustainability and consider the needs of future generations. And we've designed this amazing, easy to use tool 
for any organization who would like to embed future thinking in their strategic planning, but also in the way they run their organization. Okay, on behalf of humans, dogs, plants, and all the other species on planet Earth, we are so excited to receive this prize. And where do we see the interspecies economy going next? Well, we see it leaving just this level and going into the Arctic, into the Amazon rainforest, into all the ecosystems where humans and non-humans need to work together to save the planet. Thank you so much. We're super excited and we can't wait to see where we take this together next. I see emergence and multiple futures and where the dreams and disruptions can fly next. One is the evolution of the game into a totally different one, and uh, perhaps uh, the creation of a more radical version of the game, which better mimics and uh, simulates uh, chaos and, and randomness in foresight. Second is uh, the creation of a customized version of uh, the game where you can play and construct new anticipatory imaginaries of regenerative city features, river features, science and technology and innovation features, including artificial general intelligence. Third is the creation of a center for engaged foresight dreamers and disruptors ne network where a community of people can share their uh, scenarios, uh, explore and discuss the future of foresight in the context of randomness and chaos. The fourth one is the publication, of course, of papers and uh, writing this with uh, players and partners all around the world and uh, hopefully uh, publish a book about uh, dreams and disruptions. The game features emergent and I look forward to sharing and generally creating it. I see dreams and disruptions as an infinite game and uh, with that I see the infinite evolution of the game in the process. Thank you so much for the honourable mention for our project, Minister for the Future. We're really chuffed. Credit to my colleagues at Nesta and Prospect magazine, particularly Celia Hannon, Rhys Howell and Florence Ngassa. Also a huge thanks to our illustrious contributors, without whom we couldn't have done it. One thing we're thinking about doing next is looking at policy instruments that facilitate long-term thinking when so much of the system pushes in the other direction. This might help Nestor achieve its missions, which are intrinsically long-term challenges. Flux trains are mission. Flux trains are mission is to try and help people understand the world so that they can change the world. And one of the most effective ways we've been able to do that is by physically taking people out of their day-to-day -day environment and out into new places to meet new spaces and see firsthand just how the world is playing out from the eyes of other people, particularly from the eyes of younger people who are in a very literal sense, the future. And that's why we are really hoping that our innovation immersion tour model, where we do take you out of your normal current reality and give you a glimpse of the future, can be globalized and extended at a much larger scale. In particular, we're very excited about welcoming people all across the world to come and see the future through the eyes of young African and particularly South African people, because we believe that Africa is very literally the future. Yes, is it for today? Why? No sé. No sé cuál será el futuro. El, el futuro serán grandes volcanes que se vienen a arrastrar con todo esto por, por todo lo que se nos... por toda la degradación que hacemos al territorio. No hay que pensar que este hambre para mañana solamente lo hagamos nosotros los indígenas. Este hambre hay que empezarlo a hacer desde las academias, ayudarle a entender con las conceptualidades a estas nuevas generaciones. Este hambre hay que, hay que juntarlo con las ONGs ambientalistas, con el Estado, con el cambio de esas políticas de burocracia, de exterminio. Hay que sensibilizar.
Hi, I am Estefania Simon Sasik, founder of Mycelium Gastronomy Network. We created Transform to lower the entry barriers for diverse stakeholders to future explorations using food as a window. So we expect to, expect to hone our skills to make even more invisible the methods and design to create a completely smooth experience that is used and useful. We want to multiply the impact of the experience by leveraging our 100 plus network nodes distributed globally in the US, Latin America, South Europe and Southeast Asia. It would allow food practitioners to incorporate the tool and use it confidently in their practice. The ultimate goal is to provide change makers in the food space with a tool and support system to accelerate collaboration pathways by creating a safe space that allows the emergence of collective intelligence towards better decision making. Those were really great videos. Maggie, I'm gonna have you lead the breakout room challenge question and then we'll get into it. Great, thanks. Uh, Lisa, how much time do we have for the breakout rooms? We're doing good on time, 20 minutes, unless anyone, um, yeah, 20 minutes. Okay, great. So when we go into the breakout rooms, uh, if you have a winner there, and I'm thinking that you might based on the number of winners here, which is fantastic, um, or an honorable mention, um, everyone gets a chance to ask a question. And the winners get a chance to choose which question they want to answer. Based on time, they might not be able to answer all of the questions. Um, so there's an opportunity to follow up along with that. Um, if there is not a winner in the in the room with you, then this is the opportunity to discuss the videos that you just saw and what was something that's surprising to you. So I welcome everyone into the breakout rooms and uh, would love to hear you know uh, your impressions after after the ceremonies. Over to you, Lisa. Thank you, Maggie. So I'm just gonna drop in the chat box something that surprised you. Okay. So the two the challenge questions are two part. You can ask a question to the winners, or you can also share something that surprised you from watching the videos. So uh, we may have some emerging fellows in the house. If that's the case, uh, identify yourselves in the room and say hello, and you can help facilitate that room. Otherwise, you'll have 20 minutes. Intr uh, winners introduce yourselves and uh, I do I did I want to mention that I asked a question to the if award winners behind the scenes and I asked if if your project was a song what would it be called and someone sent me a whole new world by Aladdin so I'm very curious to hear about uh, what project features project that is anyways you can inquire that at your own risk uh, PJ, you can get the breakout rooms going. Hope you all enjoy. Well, I know that there was plenty of time. Uh, we had a, we had an abundance of time, so I hope the conversations were fruitful, and we'll keep them going in our commute our AP our IF Awards community meetups. So if there's things that uh, we can discuss there. If you want to learn more and get in touch with our IF Award winners, all you have to do is check out our wonderful design website at apf.org. The winners will be showcased throughout the coming months, featured on FuturePod, Compass, and throughout social media. So stay tuned and stay in touch with the community. I will pass it over to you, Peter, for some closing uh, thoughts. Peter Hayward, are you back in the room? Yes, Peter, you just muted. <laughs> I see you talking, but I don't hear you, Peter. <laughs> okay, there we go. Am I unmuted? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was still I was still working from the uh, the breakout. We had a we had a wonderful conversation, a wonderfully intense conversation. Um, so hopefully like me, you had 
an amazing conversation with people doing just incredible work in our space and you feel inspired like I was inspired. I'm here just again to thank you for coming. Thanks to the IF and students for investing in our community. On behalf of the APF, um, to remind you again what Tanya said, keep your eye open for the upcoming events, the town hall. Um, as Lisa said, we are going to feature a lot of the IF winners in future pod. So keep your eye out for those as well. So again, we'll keep the we'll keep the inspiring stories going. I also want to thank Lisa and the awards committee and particularly the technical behind the scenes people for making this work so well. So congratulations, Lisa, for you and your team and the techos for, for making this happen in a relatively carbon-free <laughs> delivery mode rather than us physically have to fly around the world to do this stuff. So appreciate that. Oh. And last thing is a gift for you. Uh, Lisa mentioned that we asked people with uh, student winners and if award winners to give us a song that represents their project and their work. And we have curated all the songs into a playlist. And if you scan the QR or Lisa will put the Spotify link into the chat. Um, have a listen to it. When you're listening to the music, remember us and remember the people and the ideas and the outrageous courage of the people that you've met today. <laughs> and that's really it, Lisa. I'll pass it back to you for the last thing we do together. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Yes, uh, so we are way before, we are right on time. And before we go, so now you got your gift, and I'd like to offer a picture. If we can all maybe turn on our cameras before we go, we'll stop sharing. Yeah, smile for a group picture. Thank you for queuing that slide. We <laughs> can. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. I will count us down in three, two, one cheers thank you one more i gotta i gotta switch screens here all right cameras on in three pj where are you at in three two one cheers <laughs> amazing uh, thank you so much for showing up uh make sure you uh, walk off dancing wherever you are if you're going to sleep thank you all and thank you for Lisa, Peter, uh, Maggie, John, and for all winners and applicants for joining. See you soon, our community and our events. Thank you all. Great to see you all today. Thank you, colleagues.